Hello dear students, welcome back to the second session of the poem on children. I am L.D. Ratnakar, Department of English, Gokte P.U. College of Commerce and Science. These are the few important points of the poem. It is a beautiful poem written by Khalil Gibran. The poem is a selection from his well-known work called The Prophet. The poem is known for its spirituality. A woman requesting prophet to speak on her children. They are the sons and daughters of their own life. Next point is children belong to the life, not to the parents. Parents can give their love but not their thoughts. Parents may give shelter to the bodies but not their souls. Children's souls dwell in the house of tomorrow. The bows is used for the parents, the living arrows, the children and the god who is the archer. This archer loves both. When this poem begins, there is a prophet who could tell the future of a child who moves from one place to another place to give his spiritual discourse to the people. At one particular place, the poet finds a mother sitting in front of him and holding her babe in her arm against her bosom because she loves her child very much. She is so curious about her child's future. When she asks the prophet tell something about her child, the prophet categorically states that your children are not your children. They are from the God. They are the sons and daughters of their own life and the life that is lunging for itself. Here the word lunging means strong desire they have towards their life. The children wants to live in their own life. That is the cycle of the life. Their main desire is to live in that life, in their future. They come through you, but not from you. Children are born through the parents, but you are not the real creator of your children. The God Almighty, who is the creator of your children. Parents are just like mediators. God creates everything on this earth. Even he creates life on this earth. All the time you feel that now your children are with you, but they do not belong to you. The poet states philosophically that the children have their own individuality, their own likes and dislikes. They want to live in the future. The parents should not be possessive of their children. It means they should not consider their children as their own children because these children belong to their own future. They always live in their own worlds. In the next line, he says that they are with you, but yet not belong to you. Though they are with us, but they belong to some other place, that is, tomorrow of their life. You just give your love and affection to your children, but not your thoughts to them. You love them unconditionally and give them whatever you want, but never ever give them your thoughts to them because your thoughts may be different from 
their thoughts by imposing these thoughts they will become overcoming them later your children become helpless if you impose certain rules and regulations on them later he says that you may house your bodies but not their souls parents should protect the bodies of the children but not their souls soul does not belong to us which is eternal and which is beyond of this time it does not belong to us the soul of these children belong to the life of tomorrow when you do not have any authority over them you cannot think of it it means the younger generation is smarter than the older generation the parents are today's but the children belong to tomorrow they dwell in the house of tomorrow here the word dwell means to live you cannot see it the soul of your children in your dreams and how they think about their future later the poet advises the parents strive to be like your children but not to make your children like you here one more new word you have the word strive means make great effort to achieve something in their life he advises the parents that their dreams not to force your children to be like you we should born like our children and loving and caring children want to live the life of that moment they are very fast knowledgeable and very quick in their thinking their advancement definitely will help to build a better world your old days are gone now because our life always moves forward not backward it does not tarry with yesterdays let us learn one more new word here the word tarries means staying at one particular place our life is always moving it always changes it moves on and on it does not stay at one particular place or with yesterdays we have to accept it as our life unfolds its chapters our life never comes back in the last stanza the poet employs three important metaphors here you are the bows the parents are the bows the children are like living arrows and this god Al- almighty who is the real archer of the world here the word he refers to god only the archer is to set a target like a goal in the lives of these children god creates infinite path in the life of the children and knows their destiny the path which is meant for the children in its conclusion the god has decided the future of your children children are just like puppets in the hands of this god almighty the arrows can be launched for a better future if that bow is stable the god almighty who sees the distant goals and prompts them to shoot the arrows in a very swift and correct direction then only the living arrows may hit their target the poet philosophically says in its conclusion that uh, there is a strong bondage between the parents and the children like uh, the relationship between bows and arrows the more that bow bends the string of the bows will get a strength 
with that strength the living arrow like children will be launched for their better future the more the parents bent the relationship will survive the parents have to bow before the great archer the god loves the flying arrows and the bent bows equally the poet concludes the poem saying that it is the truth of the life and why do you have to struggle your children are with you right now you own them physically but they have their own destinations once they reach their destinations their life will be happy forever the god who loves the bow which is stable in the relationship of their life with this your poem came to an end read this poem once again and in the next slide there is a relationship between parents and children and remember all those important points i had given with this your poem came to an end these are the some objective questions that may come from this poem for one mark questions read all these objective questions and write them in your notes thank you